Mojo, Ilo, thank you, Uncle. That was very kind of you. Um, for a moment, there, I was really was wondering who, who are you talking about. Uh, but uh, thank you kindly. Um, it's uh, not necessary to talk about all of those because I think uh, most of what you guys are concerned about is my impact in the Hmong community. And so for that very reason, I do uh, you know, thank uh, Uncle Brandon and not only that, but um, I also had some of the volunteers pass out some of the, the uh, first walk piece that we were using in Elk Grove. Um, the walk piece illustrates some of the highlights of the, the things that I've accomplished while I was uh, on the council and as the mayor in the city of Elk Grove. Um, <clears throat> before I go into that, I, I want to take this uh, opportunity in time to also uh, bring on to stage um, somebody who's very significant. Um, most people don't realize that, but uh, I am married. Um, I often go places without my wife because I have her working very hard on the campaign. And so, my wife, please come on stage. Um, I want to prove to everyone that I am married. And, uh, so. <laughs> Even when I was in, in, in office, uh, as the mayor, a lot of the work that actually goes out of City Hall, um, I want to make sure I make some sense before the letters goes out, and, uh, you know, all that. She's the, uh, my right-hand person that uh, proofreads uh, and does a lot of that. Um, I was just joking with uh, one of um, uh, auntie and uncle. Uh, they had me uh, do a letter of recommendation, and I said, geez, uh, you know, I mean, I am going to need my wife. I don't know if she's available, so maybe it's better to you ask her. Uh, but, um, you know, that is the truth. And um, in American politics, I just don't have the time to go everywhere with my wife and look pretty. We just don't have the time to do that because there's a sense of urgency and importance for us to make sure that we get our stuff done. And, um, you know, while many of you are congratulating me, I'm already running for re-election. And so, my wife, she is an English teacher. I've been married uh, to her for close to 25 years. And um, she is the backbone in the campaign. Uh, she is the one who's working day and night trying to make this happen. Um, I cannot do this without her. And that is so extremely important. And I think it's, uh, it's an opportunity for the Hmong community to understand that and I think that we, we know that, but I think it, we need to be reminded uh, that in order for us to be successful, we have to have a spouse that is very supportive. And um, for all the times that um, uh, I go places without her, it's because she's working. That's why she can't come uh, with me. But I appreciate her completely, and she's here for me tonight as a special treat. Uh, and I love to take pictures with you because I believe it's without her, it's just me uh, and you. So, you know, I don't leave immediately after the uh, event. I would love to, to connect with, the, uh, with many of you. And for some of you who are interested in, in finding kind of like the rest of the story, uh, who Steve really is, she's the one who has all the secrets. And so uh, I always joke about it to that. Um, the, the day when she's going to run against me, uh, that's when I'm going to lose because uh, she knows all of my uh, skeletons in my closet. So, you know, thank you, honey. Uh, did you want to say a few words? Uh, for well, first off, I will never run for office. Um, <laughs> I think you doing it is enough. But before I leave the stage, I just, I just wanted to say thank you to Yonya Chena, Papa Gao. Dr. Jukao, Tia, or Auntie, my own, um, and the other, the rest of your team. Thank you so much. Um, and again, apologies that I cannot be down here. I should be down here helping you all. But as Steve mentioned, and I'm up there helping uh, volunteers, making sure that they're walking, they're doing what they're supposed to do. So it's a very, I guess, busy time for us. So again, my apologies and my heartfelt thank you. And also everybody that's here today, thank you for your time and your contributions. Um, as always, because we are Hmong and because you have supported us since we started on this political career, you are our backbone. 
Um, like I always tell Steve, we have enough. There are so many challenges. Sorry. We have enough to write 10 books by now. There are hardships and um, such, such wonderful things like, like now. All of you are so special and we always come back to the home community because like I said, you are our backbone. And when we have nowhere else to turn, we know that we can always come back to you. So thank you, and these are not tears. It's not because Guto Shia, it's because I'm just so moved that every time Guto Tonina, you always come through and you always help. So thank you so much. We will always remember, and you will definitely be in our books, I promise. Thank you. And, um, you know, she is the emotional part of me. Uh, that's why I can do politics without uh, all the crying. <laughs> I tell her I have no time to cry. Uh, I, just, I just have time to get even with the other side. So, um, the other person that's really significant, and um, from the beginning, uh, that's the reason why uh, he's not just uh, supporting me in the campaign, but he is a brother. Uh, many of you know him as John Paul, uh, and I'd like for him to come up as well. first <laughs> Uh, school board ran, we lost the Beijing Lushan. Steve Chan ran for school boy. We won that. Upan Kong Plow ran for city council and we won the, the race. And Upan Kong Trump for the mayor and we also won the race. So, Thank <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. 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 Thank you so much for mayor. Thank you so much for coming. 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 So, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to make sure that I'm going to make Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, one other person that I want to acknowledge is Nithi well, John. Um, her name is Pam, and she's here as well. The young Nithi, she lost and die. She loans her husband to me because um, I, I, you know, it's almost uh, disrespectfully, but I have him help me 24 hours, literally. Uh, thank you for being so considerate. Um, uh, and so in my remarks and my in my talk, I'm going to mix English with Hmong. 
um, for the for the sake of providing um, you know a roadmap as to what I'm talking about to our friends who don't necessarily speak Hmong and for those who don't necessarily speak English. It is only mom. Well, it's true. I don't know all mom, but I, you know, I, I try. I try to diversify it a little bit so that people can understand what we're talking about. So thank you, Dr. Gao Wang. Thank you, Trustee Wang. Thank you for your committee, your commitment, and your willingness to uh, put forward your resources so that we can have this wonderful event today. I am very pleased that your commitment to this cause is such that you're able to deliver this particular event. Uh, this is no easy feat. I understand that and I appreciate that. And I know that you guys have worked tirelessly so that we can um, have this particular event today. And thank you to all of you for your contribution. Each and every dollar makes a difference. I always say um, that um, it's, not the, uh, it's not the amount that you give, but it's your willingness to give. <laughs> We have uh, her contribution of a dollar and eighteen cents has a significant place in my heart. Um, her commitment and her willingness to say that she's willing to give to support a young man who's willing to step up and run for public office has a lot more meaning than the hundred thousand, than the twenty-five thousand that I received from some of these packs that I received from some of these uh, contributors. Uh, this is something that only people who have gone through the war will understand what it means to cross the Mekong River uh, to be refugees, uh, to understand and appreciate that whenever we have somebody who's run for public office, we should be sworn. And I think that is a, a, a real key and tremendous, uh, you know, um, uh, story that uh, that I, I'd love to share. And go hi, Lena got me in Kashia here. To one bunch of battle like that, we might have a job that all. To the battle of Tao, Yin Zhong, to battle of Chen, Yin Zhong, to your father, so they do hi, how you do. You know, Zhong hi, how you do, like it. Zhong in Peru, a campaign for Law Juju. So thank you again very much for all of your contribution. I am tremendously grateful for all of you being here and all of your willingness to, to contribute to a candidate um, you know, several hundred miles from here. Uh, I think that um, we have our hearts in the right place. Uh, we have a, the right vision uh, in that we've been in this country for about 40 years. It's time for us to get engaged in the political system and not only to get engaged but to really make a difference. Getting involved in, and uh, not just sitting back and, and, and watching uh, is a key. And as I look into the audience, I think that Most people don't know this, but as a young man, I would always ask questions as to why we were here in the United States. You know, what was it that motivated the Hmong people, the Lao people, the Kamu, the Mian to come here? All of us has one thing, one thing in common. We helped the United States in the war. 
every one of us who are here from Laos, we had some kind of contribution to the war. We helped rescue American lives, we saved American lives, and that's something that we should be proud of. And the one person that I can think of, the one person that we will always remember, is General Van Pao. There's no ifs, ands, and buts. We will always care on our shoulders. We will always remember that in that for him. In my, in my conviction uh, to, to understanding the Sikh War of Laos and appreciating that, as a, a young um, junior at Clovis High, uh, I, uh, I wanted to take on uh, a project, particularly to focus on the Sikh War of Laos. That's the time in which I got to know General Van Pao very well. Uh, I was very fortunate to have an opportunity to, to sit down with Colonel Meng Yi uh, to talk about um, his work with the General uh, and the efforts in which uh, many of the Hmong veterans put forward. Now, during this time, my father was still alive, and so my father shared a lot of things with me as to uh, what it meant to be a soldier on the front line. What it meant to receive an order from Tan Huan Vak Pao so I want that American, uh, dead American uh, pilot in a body bag sent back to America. I think that's pretty profound. You know, he doesn't care how many Kamu, uh, how many men, how many Lao soldiers, how many Hmong soldiers die. When he gives an order, he wants that body recovered. And these are the stories that we have to tell the American people to, so that they will realize and appreciate that many of the Southeast Asians here, particularly the ones from Laos, we're not here because we want to be here. We're here because of our purpose. We did something in Laos. And I'm tired of hearing it being a secret war. We should be proud of it. We should be talking about it. And we should be mentioned every time General Van Pao. And every time we mention that, our value to here in the United States will increase just a little bit more. That's why it's so important. So during this time, uh, in my uh, research, what I was asking uh, as a 16-year-old, I was asking why, why these veterans from the Sikh War of Laos weren't receiving full benefits, full veteran benefits. If they were being paid directly by the Central Intelligence Agency, if the money was bypassing the Royal Laotian government going directly to the Sikh Army, led by General Van Pao, that would then make this army an agent of the United States of America. If they were agents of the United States of America, they are employees of the United States government. If that was the case, then wouldn't they reap the benefits of veteran benefits as well? It was a serious question. I asked that question and I went to the Veterans Administration. You know what they said? We don't have time to talk to you, little boy. You know, get out of here. And so those are stepping stones for me that every time my goodness. We don't have people in positions of power. That's why they tell little boy, go away. We don't want to hear your question. You know, these are legitimate questions, and these questions came back to life when the general died. When we were just seeking for an opportunity to memorialize Tanapur Vapal in Arlington National Cemetery, and we got rejected, which then spun off and developed into something that's a little bit more so now uh, with the, uh, the, the signing of the recognition of the veterans, Hmong veterans, uh, and the Laotian veterans, so that they can actually be buried in these national cemeteries. And I think that's tremendous, and it goes uh, you know, a lot to Bay uh, who have lobbied uh, in Washington, Washington for doing that. But in my development of finding out the rest of the story as the reasons why all of us are here, I realize that I appreciate exactly the contributions of all of you, either you, your parents, your grandparents, or everyone who are here in the United States, who are products of the Sikh War of Laos, who uh, will continue to carry that legacy of war until we are no longer on this earth. <laughs> my, uh, my challenge to all of you uh, is that we have to continue to tell this story. <laughs> so that every generation we continue to tell the story so that they would remember and they will be proud and they will stand tall when they hear the mention of General Vang Pao. This is so, so important for all of us. And for, you know, politics aside, for those of you who have objections to that, I say set it aside and think about the significant contribution of General Vang Pao to the Hmong history and how we will forever be known as General Vang Pao's Hmong people who came to the United States of America. 
when I visited China, they were known as that. You know, they referred to me as Hmong of Chinese descent, but Gu Ya, the Hmong Minyo, Hmong Matia, like Pun Fa Ba, Ya Hmong. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that in a communist country, you know, who were at odds with our people, in, with general power. But yet they acknowledge us and they recognize this Hmong boy who's connected to general power. I think that's pretty profound. That makes me darn proud. Does it make you proud? Absolutely, right? ตองโกหูตัวขอนี่ละสิเตียขอนี่เกดอนเนชั่นตองเนี่ยเปจอกติสเปชั่นน่ะมองเชียร์ไฮสันตุเปยยาเฮนน่ะมองซึเอเปเ
我打了五年差，弄了五年了，刚差，我接下来的你差不多了，也回到好的，你接下来的差不多没事的。所以，要你对我了，你也差不多了，你也差，所以你去差到那，你还知道不？别都没事的，你别，要不然那了，弄了你